What's up guys, Lester here again, bringing you another achievement guide. This is more of an achievement journey, showing you how I actually got the 100% in PAL world. And you guys can take tips from this. So we're going to make a specific world in order to make ourselves very strong and make it so we can kill a lot of the bosses without really leveling up too much. But the last couple bosses do require a bit of leveling up. Here is the actual map of the bosses. You want to make sure you go through it in this order because they are actually very strong when you get to the last uh, couple. So four and five are very strong. So make sure that you, you can explore this map and capture as many pals as possible. But this is how we're going to do the custom difficulty and custom game. So take a screenshot of the, the bosses. We're going to do this. There is only 10 achievements in this game. One for capturing your first pal, 10 pals, 20 pals, 50, and then 90. I made the 91 my last achievement and I would just basically capture pals along the way while doing this. So as I was leveling up and killing the bosses, I would just capture any pal that I saw. So make sure you do that. But the other five achievements are just for killing the bosses. So watch this. This is all the settings that I did. If you find any better settings, let me know. But this is you can't change the settings once you make a world. So once you've done this, it's set and you can't change it. But this is one of the best ones I've found. You don't really get hungry. You're very strong. You can basically kill low-level pals with your fists or even high-level pals with your fists. And you don't take damage from pals, really. So even the bosses. But watch this, this is going to be like an achievement journey, I'll explain things along the way, just jump in here or there when I'm doing specific things, and yeah, hopefully we can have some fun with this achievement video. It's not going to be super long, hopefully, because this game probably takes about 20 hours to complete, but this is like just a, a guide on how to push you in the right direction to kill the bosses quite easily. So watch all these settings, and then I will jump back in with some gameplay footage. Also, a couple of quick tips before we actually get into the guide. Make sure you capture every single pal that you see that you can capture if it's a new pal. Make sure you pick up every single egg because the incubation time is going to be instant in this. And also, you need those to add to your achievements for collecting the pals. So by the time I'd finished all the bosses, I only had about 10 pals left to collect. So that was from eggs, capturing all the ones that I found. You can weaken them pretty easily by using your fists if you're worried about killing them because your fists won't do too much damage to higher level ones. But yeah, always capture the the ones you see that you can. Grab all the eggs you can. Make sure you pick up every single resource you can because you will need these resources for the later bosses because they are actually really difficult to kill even in this, this mode that we're creating. But yeah, hopefully this guide is helpful, guys. I've got other tips later on, but just watch the full video and you should be able to complete this game fairly easily. It is a very fun game, though, so I hope they add more to it. So we load into the world and we start putting our Dark Souls and our One Punch Man fists to the test and start one punching pals because that's what we do in this game. So level up, that's how fast you level up, already level 5. Next cat, level 6. This one doesn't level me up yet, but you see how fast this levels you up. So continue doing this. Once we've punched enough pals and got our technology points, we're going to make sure that we can build the bench. Make a club because the club makes you a bit stronger and you want to make sure you make the pickaxe and the axe. And then we're going to go on our merry way. And then once we've done that, crafted ourselves a bit of armor. You don't actually need to do that. You could go into this fight naked. But this is the very first boss area. So this is the syndicate tower. So let's go in and punch up our first boss, even though we're very low level still. So here we go, first boss. And this is going to be sped up quite a bit because this boss takes quite a while when you only have an axe. And I summoned my pals as well, but they didn't do crazy amounts of damage. So you just keep whacking away at him with your axe. You can see how much damage you're doing to him, but he's doing zero to us. So you want to make sure you just keep going. You can summon a pal if you want. They won't really be doing very much. There is settings you can change where the pals do massive damage, but then it also seems to affect how much your pals take damage, and then they just insta-die. So don't do that. Just do the settings I've showed you at the start of the video, and you should be able to do this. So a couple minutes later, once we've swung our axe a thousand times and Grisbolt goes down and then that'll be our first achievement. You won't see it in this video because I did the achievement in my first world when I was figuring out how to actually do the settings. But yep, boss goes down pretty easily and then you'll get your first achievement. Okay, she's kind of cool. Oh shit! It's Electa Buzz.
Okay, that's why is it so pixelated and weird looking? Go Lambal, kick his ass. So as you see here, this is my original world, and my pals do crazy amounts of damage. But the bosses also do mad damage to the pals, so I decided to just keep it in the world that I was in. And yeah, this is where I get the first achievement. But if you guys ever want to see any of this stuff live, I do all this stuff live on Twitch. So I basically made a lot of this achievement guide just on Twitch. So if you want to watch me there, I might actually be doing a stream on YouTube at some point. But yeah, hopefully this has been helpful. Keep watching. We've got some more fun things to come. Lambal almost killed it by himself. Lambal, my little goat. Well, he's a lamb, but he's my goat. Uh, can I, can I jump off this? So with the boss defeated, we're on top of the tower. We have a quick little look at the map, and all we need to do is return home, and then we start prepping for the next boss. But like I said, capture pals on your way to all these places. So you want to make sure you have at least a flying or a, a mount that you can run on. There's some birds at the start of the game area near here and there's also the elk sort of things that you can get i don't think i actually got a flying one until much later but yeah make sure you've got some sort of travel mount and then we're crafting our parachute just so we can start gliding around the map so we're not having to run everywhere so if you get somewhere high just fly all over the place because you have basically insane stamina in this mode and then we check the map because we're going to be heading towards our next boss battle so we've already killed this one, so now we look on the map and we start heading towards the northeast. And we're going to take a very quick little swim over to this land, because we've got infinite stamina, so you don't need to worry about drowning. While we're running across this land as well, we do actually encounter some other pals that are a bit aggressive. So we show them who's boss with our axe, because they can't do any damage to us. And even though this doesn't do crazy damage to them, we're going to get crazy experience from the enemies. There you go. We're already level 20 by this point by just killing random pals and killing bosses. So once you've ran across that land and found yourself a fast travel point, get back to base, make a tundra outfit. And then the reason for this is because the weather is the only thing that can kill us. Heat and cold will literally kill you. Anything else in this game can't seem to kill you. So just equip this, get back to where you were, and then we'll continue on. When you get back to this land as well, you'll obviously have the Tundra outfit on, so you'll be fine. Just make sure to either capture or kill some of these pals. You probably won't be able to capture them because these ones are fairly high level. And at this point, I didn't have the, the crazy new balls that you need. But get over here. You've got the fast travel point right outside the tower and then we're going to head back to base and we're going to make sure to craft some fire stuff because you can craft a spear as well the spear is actually really good but you need fire stuff because it makes it a lot easier so fire bow or whatever you want to make so on to the second boss and probably our fourth achievement by this point if you've been capturing pals along the way maybe even more actually because you might have caught um 20 but yeah carry on this boss is going to be fairly simple because they can't really do much damage to us i think she actually does damage us a bit in this fight but they don't damage you fast enough to actually kill you so just go along this fight does take a while but i'll skip ahead and show you the ending so as you can see by the timer it actually literally took about seven minutes to kill this boss so i'm using my club i'm using my fire arrows i'm using literally everything that i can i even have my fire pal where i use them as a flamethrower and it didn't really do much damage either but the boss goes down because we don't really take much damage and yeah that's another boss down and another achievement unlocked I love how she's like wriggling around. Calm down. So we're just going to double check our achievements and see what we've got so far. So got my nice game pass achievement quest. Right, so then. let's open the achievements and have a look. Three more to go. So five out of ten. We've only got the bosses and the pals to capture. 
So from here we can actually see the boss locations. So there's one up there on the snowy mountain area, there's one in the desert, and there's also one in a volcano. The volcano is the one we're going to be heading to next, and that is a very big slog if you don't have a flying mount, which I didn't have at this point. I only had the ick, ick deer, or whatever it's called, the purpley deer looking thing. So I ran there and climbed the massive mountain, which actually was very tricky. I was hoping that I wouldn't get stuck in any terrain, and I didn't, but it was very, very tricky. So let's get into that and get up the mountain. I did actually try and capture a flying one going up the mountain, but this thing is quite high level. It's not hard to kill, but it's hard to capture, because like I said, I don't have the, the right spheres to capture them. So I just decided to murder them and move on up the mountain. So as you can see, finally, finally at the top of the mountain, and we can see the the pillar where the boss is. This took me too long, way too long. Just get a flying mount, you've got infinite stamina in this mode, and you can just fly up to the top of the mountain. This, I would not recommend climbing up the mountain, because you actually do run out of stamina climbing up the mountain, because it's so big, even though your stamina is almost infinite in this version that we've edited. Yeah, uh, don't do it. So basically, we get into this boss fight, and uh, I'll, I'll let you see what happens. <laughs> So boss fight starts and he's bugged out. So this would have been amazing if I actually had the damage to kill him at this point, but we were just trying it out just to see if we could. So as you can see, not doing a very large amount of damage here and you only have 10 minutes to kill the bosses. I don't know what happens after 10 minutes, but I'm going to guess that you don't actually win if you don't kill them within 10 minutes. So I had to rethink my strategy, come back, because I, I wailed on this guy for about five minutes and then realized, nah, I can't beat him. So we're going to have to go back to base and rethink our strategy. So good thing is, before you go back to base, remember this location. This is the fast travel point just where the boss tower is that I just showed you. There is a huge amount of sulfur and up there that you can see to the top of the screen, there is a huge amount of ore there as well. So this is going to be a prime farming spot if you need ore or sulfur for anything you want to make. I came back to this point quite a lot because my strategy for this next boss was make a couple metal spears. I wasn't sure how much damage they would do, but by the time I made them, they actually did a lot of damage. So if you want to grind levels, you can just kill a lot of these guys here because as you see, I gained about 3,500 experience from just killing one of them. So respawn in, kill some enemies, get the ore, go back to your base. Or you could even set up a pal box next to the ore and then you can teleport from that to your base and then deposit all the stuff that you need. But you will probably have to do a little bit of grinding at this point because we need metal spears. Right, so once you've done a bit of grinding and you've got your metal spears, this requires a little bit of stuff to make. I'm trying to keep it as low cost as possible so you're not spending hours grinding. Like I said, the game takes about 20 hours, probably a little bit less if you're a bit faster. But create a couple metal spears and come back and do this fight. I had captured a couple more pals by this point, but they weren't super strong ones. So as you can see, this does a lot more damage as long as you're doing critical hits. So make sure you try and hit him in the head or hit the guy on his back. And then after a lot of stabs, you will kill this guy. <laughs> and then you've got your other achievement. So as you can see here, he's very low health. And I'm down to using my axe. Just because I wanted to see how much damage this would do. And there you go. Achievement unlocked. So, trying to keep it as low cost as possible, so the spears usually do the job. If you have a couple of the, the pals that are stronger, just throw them out there. So my pals are level 40-ish, but they didn't really do very much damage to him. The spear did a lot of damage, and it did take about 7 or 8 minutes to kill him there. So, if you want to grind and get a few extra things, I would recommend the crossbows. So the poison crossbow, the fire crossbow, and there is some other items you can make, like guns. The guns are very powerful, but they require a lot more grinding. So... The last boss, we go for guns, because that boss is actually really strong. But the next boss is usually pretty doable without having to go crazy and grind. So just follow along, and we'll get to the next boss. Like I said, all of these boss locations are at the very start of the video. So just make sure you've got a screenshot of that or a picture on your phone, and you'll be able to find where the bosses are pretty easily. You just have to do a lot of climbing and make sure you've got a tundra outfit and a tropical outfit so you don't burn or get very cold. Also, remember to make sure you capture as many pals as you can around the map while you're traveling because this will help towards getting those pal achievements. I only had about 10 left to go by the time I'd done all the bosses. So we head back to base and we create the Mega Glider and another spear. And you don't need the Mega Glider, but I would recommend creating another spear and the Mega Glider if you really have the materials for it because it just makes it easier traversing the map. Create a Metal Spear 
And at this point, I would recommend farming for some more materials to create the crossbows. Fire crossbow and poison crossbow. By this point, you've probably killed enough pals to get a lot of poison material and or fire material. Because this next boss, we go into it, the fight and it doesn't go very well. Also, I don't know why the PNGs are all blurred out here when you're playing the game. But anyway, you guys let me know how, how this would go if you're trying to do this. The bird constantly flies away from you and if you get hits in, it barely does any damage with a spear. So yeah, you tell me if this would work in 10 minutes. Probably not. So I call this a fail and we quit out and I create the crossbows. And then we come back and you guys let me know how much more damage this is doing. Right, so second attempt with the crossbows. So I had all three crossbows by this point and the three shot bow. You don't need it, but I just wanted to test out what would work. So three shot bow does a fair amount of damage, but this is the poison bow. Let's see how much damage it does. 1400, that's a fair amount. And that actually puts a poison dot on the boss, so they'll tick down even more damage while you're using it. So you can use poison. Poison is pretty effective against this boss, and you can use the fire ones as well. They're just not as effective, I don't believe. And they, they don't seem to leave a, a dot on the boss. I think it sets on fire, but it doesn't look like it actually takes extra damage. But the boss can't hurt you, so just trial and error this if you want. But I would recommend creating the crossbows, because they are much easier at killing this boss. So it still took a good few minutes to take this boss down, as you can see. Al almost six minutes, even with these powerful weapons. But boss goes down, and you get your next achievement. One more to go for the bosses, and this is the one where you need to do a little bit of grinding. Unless you figure out a way to do it yourselves, but from my experience, you need guns. Or grenades, or some really powerful pals, but I just used guns. It didn't take me that long to grind the materials I needed for the guns and I already had a lot of materials from just going around the map. If you guys want to do it that way, feel free. I'll show you how I did it, and then you can take inspiration from that and do it yourselves. So hopefully you guys have been following my tips from the start of the game about collecting every pal that you can find, all the eggs, etc. You should have a lot of pals by this point. This area is quite high level, but you can kill these enemies very easily if you followed along and got the crossbow. The fire crossbow basically just one-shots all these guys, and you get an insane amount of experience. So if you have low level pals that you want to take into fights with you, bring them here or level them up. And this also boosts your level as well. So I ran around here for maybe a good 10, 15 minutes just killing everything. You get a lot of ice stuff from this as well. So you can use that for, for your crafting and stuff later too. But run around this area, kill everything, gra gather all the eggs that you can find, and then take them to your incubator. That'll give you even more experience and stuff like that. So this is basically the penultimate area where the final boss is but you need to make sure you have at least a decent level and we need to make sure that we have guns. So you technically could do it with just the handgun, but from what I've noticed with that, you would need a crap ton of bullets. So the way I did it, I had the handgun just as a backup, but I made the double barrel shotgun because that actually minced the boss. So you'll see that soon, but that does require a lot of grinding. So hopefully you've been following along and you've been gathering as many resources as you could find as you've been going through the game and then you should have enough by this point to not have to grind an insane amount to get the the ones that you need so follow along we'll get to the next boss and i'll show you guys how i killed it so this is actually the first try with the boss here so you guys can see how little damage this boss actually takes from the weapons that we've crafted already it it's not too bad but from what i was calculating you probably can't kill it within the 10 minute time frame if you want to try with these weapons and just power through feel free but I just made it a little bit easier myself because I'm going to play this game past getting all these achievements anyway. So I just decided to make more weapons and stuff. So I'll, I'll let you watch a little bit of this and then I'll fast forward. Yeah, so barely any damage being done here. So we're going to end our own life because nothing can kill us. And we need to get out of this fight. So we go back, we do a bit more prep, we come back fully locked and loaded, and this guy dies. So I'm going to show you guys how that works. The The way you craft the guns, it takes a lot of resources. So like I've mentioned before, you probably will need to do a little bit of grinding if you haven't done it already. But if you've just been kind of catching pals, picking up stuff as you go along, making sure you've made like another base here or there, and you've transported the stuff back, you should have a fair amount of stuff. Like, making a conveyor belt to make the weapons and stuff like that isn't actually that difficult. You just need to make refined uh, ingots, I believe, which is coal, which I'll actually show you a place where you can get a vast amount of coal. 
Okay, so I went a little bit mad with the crafting after I realized this boss is very difficult. So you can actually just make a handgun and make crap tons of bullets and do it this way that I'm going to show you. Or just make it a bit easier on yourself. Make a double barreled shotgun. Make a decent amount of shotgun shells and you can take the boss down in a few hits. And the way you do this is you can actually boost your attack against the boss too. So if you want to maybe try it a different way and not craft a shotgun, you can go and try with different weapons, but there is a way to boost your attack against this boss specifically. So I'll show you how to do that here. So in order to buff your attack, if you just want to use normal weapons, you actually want to pick up, I think it's called Chillet, this pal here. You want to make the saddle for it as well. It doesn't require that much to make, which is great. The only thing you need to do is catch Chillet and that is just on this part of the map over here. So go over to this part of the map, you can see Chillet right here, and you'll be able to catch him. So just down here, it's not actually too far from where I made my base. I don't know how I didn't capture him earlier, but what he does is he adds dragon power to your abilities when you're mounted on him. 